Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, my single solitary viewer, and welcome back to NHL 20 Franchise Mode. The expansion team is eliminated, and uh, the Stanley Cup pl uh, Playoff Finals is being played. It looks like... Hmm... The evil Tampa Bay Cheaters have won the Stanley Cup. They've beaten the Vancouver Canucks in their 50th season of existence. As you can see, the final two, Canucks versus Lightning, our team, the Assassins, the big cranium, the big skull, beat the Bruins, the Leafs, but then fell to Tampa Bay. And the trophies are awarded to Claude Giroux. And congratulations. The Norris to Ekman Larson. Giordano won last year. The Lady Bing goes to Pedersen of the Canucks. The Calder Memorial to Quinton Hughes, not our own Elijah Martindale. Of course, Quinton Hughes is like, uh, <laughs> probably had a great year and, and, and what a quality rookie that is. So there's no shame there. The Costumite surprisingly goes to Andres Palat. Not Braden Point, who was, I think, leading the team at the time that they beat our team. Uh, though Palat did have 11 goals by the end of the series. Grubauer wins all the goalie trophies and Dowdy uh, wins the Masterton. Jack Adams Award goes to our own coach, Mr. Coombs, uh, whose actual first name I forget. Uh, it's, it starts with a C. Uh, but it looks like uh, someone is going to be, be winning something in terms of trophies for the Assassins. That's a first step in history. Riley. O'Reilly gets the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And the Lindsay goes to Giroux. And the Maurice Richard trophy goes to Brad Marchand. That wraps it up for the trophies. And uh, we'll be beginning the offseason uh, with the new information about the salary cap. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes to be done here, so it looks like there's nothing going to be happening on the ice. That's what happens during the offseason, but uh, the general manager, aka me, has a lot of job to do. And there's going to be uh, house cleaning, not because the people are bad. I love me some Mark Giordano. He was pretty much one of the best players during the season and ended up having the most points of the team during the playoffs by the end and he's like uh, one of those role model type of guys never got drafted in the NHL he worked his way there through the European leagues and they got finally noticed as a what a, a an older type rookie that basically came out of nowhere and uh, became uh, an important piece of the Calgary defense for years and years Eric Stahl will also be leaving and that's only because of their age and because I can trade them away for quality prospects. That's the reason. They're my biggest leaders, but unfortunately they're not long-term assets and uh, I'll be trading them away to try and get youth. The building blocks that we can build on in Quebec City here for the long-term. Uh, so Eric Stahl, another uh, indispensable player this season, but uh, yeah, he'll be going. And uh, uh, the others, hey, uh, you know, I've had some great time with a lot of these players. A lot of these players uh, have uh, made a, their mark during the season. Unfortunately, n only Elijah Martindale and uh, and probably Wierenski uh, are untouchable. Everyone else could potentially go if it helps me build the team uh, towards the future. But I do expect to keep Ble Gurianov and, uh, for example, Sprong, and to, to see them grow into big assets next season. The draft lottery is in, and the big, big winners are Edmonton. They're getting Alexis Lafreniere. They jump from 10th to 1st, and Buffalo wins pretty big as well, jumping from 12th to 3rd, 3rd overall. Uh, Quebec, uh, with uh, the Blue Jackets pick, uh, stay 13th overall. I'm going to be trading up. That's why Giordano is on the table. That's why Mark Stahl is up for trade. Because I need to trade up and get some quality prospects in this draft. Once uh, we looked at the draft class, we see that uh, eight of the nine first picks are elite caliber players. Elite high for Alexis Lafayette, which is just under franchise level. Um, and, but there's a lot of quality players that could be obtained, and so I think it makes it possible to trade up 
and get uh, perhaps cheap by a manner of speaking prospects like Tim Stutzel who in in real life actually uh, his stock went way up and he's probably a top five now instead of being a top ten um, and the rest of the players in the round most of them will be top six forwards top four defensemen uh, even though they're not very well scouted for the most part so the way this works is that most of the players as you can see they're real-life kids uh, that play in the CHL or uh, sometimes in Sweden and uh, you know uh, Finland and uh, the extra Liga and so on and these are real prospects and so uh, they come up time after time after time after time when you play this game and so you kind of learn them and you know exactly what the skill level are is for them that's how I know that some of them are sleepers down there like my and uh, and Oliver Suni um, Alexei Chistov here comes from Russia. He's a top six forward, uh, but Russia, this game, NHL 20, does, do not have the rights to the KHL, and they don't have the rights to the NCAA players, basically the American University players. And so all of those players uh, are made up by the computer, like Elijah Martindale's, not actual real-life prospect. He's a made-up prospect by the game to simulate uh, the college American system. Um, and so, if you want to find rare treasures, you early on in the first few drafts, you want to be able to scout as accurately as you can the players of Russia and the American system, because that's where you might find the dark horses, the, the hidden gems. That's where you might find them. Because my franchise is new, a lot of my scouts are actually bad and have done a rather poor job. Notably, my American scouts uh, have not scouted very well. However, I have... I, I cannot say enough good things about the job that has been done in Scandinavia and Russia. And so a lot of Russian players are coming up to the forefront here, like this low elite Karpatsev that I can get like at rank 120. That's a late, late draft in the Ruslan Krostin here, like late, late, late in the draft. And those are little uh, hidden little gems here that you can get. Here I've got uh, a lot of talented forwards and two elite goaltenders potentially that I could get in the second round, both from Russia. And um, listen, to put things into perspective, the average team in the league will probably get one top six and one top nine forward from this draft and the rest of the prospects are going to be pretty worthless. But because of the stellar job my Russian scout has done, I'll probably be able to get way, way more than this. Every year as players retire, uh, notably this time Zetterberg, Hossa and uh, Chera, many others as well, Derek Roy, uh, Franzen, uh, but two of them become scouts, Shara and Haley. And uh, hey, there I could hire them if I so choose. I set up my uh, trading block for the draft. I'm hoping to trade Giordano Stahl, perhaps Shara, maybe other players, in order to try and get top end talent. And as soon as the draft begins, we're on the clock. Well, actually, Edmonton is on the clock, but I'm trying everything I can to try and get that first pick overall. I'm offering my two first round picks and everything but the kitchen sink and nothing is good enough. And uh, I have to move on. I have to move on. The Lafreniere is going to Edmonton and that's the end of it. But perhaps for not so much, I could obtain pick number nine, Tim Studzel, because uh, St. Louis is willing to trade their pick. You can tell by the little green symbol uh, and see their 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 pick here is on their trading block. So, uh, of course, I want to offer a pick to myself and uh, get what I can. If I add stall here, though, I want to remove the Blue Jackets pick and uh, switch it probably to uh, the Philly pick, of course. Even then, I'd probably be giving a little bit too much the time is of the essence here. Yeah, maybe I, I gave a bit too much, but uh, there you go. It's a done deal. Stall and uh, a, a first pick, which would become a top six player, and I'll be trading that for an elite player. So I think I still win in the end. 
Uh, I still need to obtain more picks, and this time I'm targeting Detroit because I think the fact that they have so much room on their salary cap well, it gives me a chance of sending Giordano their way and share it. But ooh, apparently that's not that's not the trade they have in mind. That's not enough either. So what could I add? Maybe young Madison Bowie? Would they take that? They do. So I get also a, a second round pick that I'm hoping to use to draft one of the elite Russian goaltenders. So in this trade, I gave a lot away. Giordano, my, my 13th pick overall, and a, a top four defenseman prospect in Madison Bowie. Actually, Madison Bowie, I think, is destined to become a top six defenseman. But uh, shh, don't tell that to Detroit. And uh, maybe I'll be able to uh, win some stuff. So the, the draft continues. Uh, and uh, Byfield goes to LA. And uh, Holtz, Alexander Holtz, goes to Ottawa. The Rangers will draft probably uh, Cole Perfetti. Dang it. I was hoping to get Cole Perfetti because he kind of looks like, uh, like Joey's little brother. <laughs> and he's a centerman, which would have been useful. But that means that Lucas Raymond, who is a higher-end prospect, slips down to, to me. And I'd be able to draft Lucas Raymond from Sweden. He's a Patrick Kane type of player. Might lack, um, might lack. I could, I could take Lundell as well, who I, I reliably know that he's, uh, he's pretty good. And, uh, Tim Studzel, of course, is, is probably uh, the other player I'll be drafting. Since Studzel is already a centerman, I'll, I'll go with, uh, Raymond, even though, technically speaking, I kind of have a, I like Lundell. I've had good experiences with him in the past. Yeah, but I have to make up my mind at some point. <laughs> I still have two minutes to do so. But uh, yeah, definitely going with Lucas Raymond. He's a he's a quality prospect in real life as well. But I don't I don't know where he's going to go in the draft IRL. Sometimes NHL uh, the game you know uh, overrates some players that end up not being not living to the uh, NHL expectations. The NHL I mean the games you know. <laughs> Not the actual uh, real-life expectations. Uh, Tim Studzel, yeah, I said uh, in real life his uh, his stock has climbed uh, quite a lot since the uh, World Junior uh, Series. He basically carried the German team on his back and uh, really turned a lot of heads. So I'm drafting him, but in the game, uh, Tim Studzel is actually like uh, many years away from making an impact in the NHL. However, he's an elite-level prospect. So he's worth quite a lot, even if I trade him or something. But of course, I'm not done trading because I'm eyeing two Russian goalies this draft. Uh, but I don't have the picks to go draft them, so I need to obtain them. I can get one from the Canadians, I think. And uh, I just have to send them uh, my pick for next year uh, in return. And then we can keep uh, simming the first round. Rossi goes to the uh, Sens. Tutin to uh, New Jersey. That's a uh, that's a uh, that's a Russian, so it's a made-up prospect. Antonio Strangers goes to Winnipeg. What will Detroit pick? <laughs> uh, Grewal, uh, who I uh, have no recollection. I think uh, that's an American made-up player here. Wallander from the um, the the. The Swedish League, but not, not the main Swedish League, the secondary Swedish League. He's a top four defenseman. It's a solid pick. Uh, Zari here for the Wild. I'm not uh, familiar with his potential. I think it's probably top six forward, though. Sulzif goes to Chicago with a top six potential. Justin Baron uh, goes to Dallas, and he's got a top four uh, potential. He's one of the better uh, defensemen you can get in the first round. Jean-Luc Fuzzi goes to New York. He's a top six forward play, uh, player. Cal Gould goes to uh, da uh, Dallas. I don't why? Why Dallas again? But Washington, he's also a top four defenseman and uh, not a bad one as that. Drisdale goes to Ottawa, who's they're picking yet again. They have a lot of draft picks. They, they are bottoming out. Uh, Griba, an American prospect, so I have no idea what his value is. Probably uh, on the top four defenseman type. 
Uh, Byron, the same thing, top four defenseman, uh, an American prospect. But this one is well scouted, so I actually know what his worth is. Uh, Grig goes to Carolina. Uh, not as familiar, not as familiar with this. Him, not as familiar with Schneider either. But I think Schneider might actually be not a top four. I don't think he's a top four. Ivanov goes to Ottawa. Uh, Theo Rochette is a top six forward center. And um, he goes to the Wild. Uh, Jeremy Poirier goes to Florida. And he's a top four defenseman. It's not a bad pick. O'Rourke goes to the Devils. And I think O'Rourke might be one of the first top nine forwards. Uh, I think McLennan is also a top nine forward. So it's like one of those not as good picks, I think. But Lapierre is a top six forward, can confirm. And he goes to the Avs. Pitlick, I forget what his potential is. I do believe it's top nine. So not everything you get in the first round is like uh, a top six type rookie. And of course, what happens with the last pick of the round, we never actually see him because we move on to the second round so damn quickly. But here is uh, where I need to uh, get my, my, my picks for uh, the drafting of the goalies. I have one, but I need more. And uh, the other is going to come from, uh, I, I guess, the Islanders. If I can, uh, or actually, I can get the picks that belonged to the Islanders from Ottawa in exchange for Andreas Janssen. And uh, that's, that's a trade. It's accepted. They'll take it. Time to make our uh, second round picks. And I'm going for Zion Nybeck, who's uh, a Swedish player, Swedish forward. Uh, his main problem is that he's uh, really short. He's undersized, but he's got top six potential. So at the very least, I got some, some trade bait with him, probably. Uh, and uh, next up, I'm also grabbing Alexei Chistov, who is a Russian player. It says the NHL, NHL ETA is three years, so that tells me he's uh, probably good enough to play in the AHL right away next season. Probably. So I have to remember this when I do the signings. This one I can sign. Um, and then... Time to draft our Russian goalies. Uh, one of the two should be good enough, but I notice that one is at pick 55 and the other at 57, and I don't have pick 57. So now I got Kolosov. He's drafted, but I'm going to have to make another move here to try and move up. Probably grab San Jose's pick if I can get it, because my 61st overall pick is not high enough, it's, uh, or it's not low enough, rather. It's too high. <laughs> uh, I can't draft that goalie I want with that pick, so I'm going to have to uh, add a little bit, a little, a little something in there for them. Uh, hopefully, they, they're not too greedy. Uh, how about the seventh pick? There you go. That's accepted. I like that. But I was only, like, moving up by, by a couple a couple picks, and at this point, it's not a, it's not a big, big, big deal. So I can draft Kavanoff as well and have my second elite goaltender. But both, both of them are more than five years away from the NHL. So I know they're not even good enough for the AHL yet. I still have more picks to acquire because I want to draft Jan Maisak and Oliver Suni from the OHL. These are the late dark horse top six forwards that are hidden there that I know of. Uh, even if I, I don't even need to scout them anymore, but I need to obtain the picks. As so I'm going to use my pick from uh, next year to get one from the Jets. That should uh, net me one of them. And uh, eventually, at least. And here, I, I think I'm overpaying here. But hey. <laughs> uh, you know. When I want something, I, 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 I take it. And we're sending Raffle to New Jersey, are we? Because there's uh, there's there's yet more prospects that need to be drafted. So Raffle's out. Sorry, Raffle. Hope you like New Jersey. But finally, I can get Jan Maisek. There you go, with uh, the 75th pick. He's a top six forward. He's a long way off from the NHL. I can grab Oliver Suni with the next pick. Also a very long way off from uh, the 
the NHL. So there's a lot, you know, I might trade them before they ever don the uh, Quebec City Assassins uniform. As uh, can happen with uh, long-term prospects, you never know if you're going to keep them around. Uh, there's more prospects I need, the more more picks, and uh, I, I trade Luc Chartier, uh, who was in the farm with a leading scorer, actually, for the farm team for the Dragons during that season. But now he's out. He's out! Because I, I want Kuleman. I need me Kuleman. Actually, Kuleman is the is the guy we drafted Raffle for. So, uh, he's, um... He's a top six forward, and he's a center, and uh, he's a long way from the NHL. That's uh, That tends to be, you know, obviously a given with these late round picks. But Karpatsev here is got leadership ability. He's, uh, he's the guy we just traded Rook Shati for. He's a low elite. That means he's very unreliably an elite player. He could turn out to be uh, a good player, maybe top six level. But it's very unreliable, so his trade value is rather low until he actually develops into something. So it, it's a it's a high risk bust or, or 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 nothing kind of prospect. But if you have a good farm team and a good system, and uh, I do believe I'm gonna make that happen, I think I can make something out of most low elite prospects. Not necessarily all, but most. Um, I'm also looking for a low elite defenseman, Korostin. Again, they're all Russian, or nearly all Russian, because my Russian scouts have done a stellar job this year. And you see the four bars, uh, That's that gives me a really precise scouting. I know this is very, very reliable. I could gamble on some other prospects, but like uh, I prefer having some safe bets. And here I'm taking all the safe bets I can find. That's why I'm trading so much. To get them all. Uh, in this case here, I'm sending Pomeville and another pick, uh, probably overpaying here for three seven-round picks from the Flyers. Usually, seven-round picks are essentially useless, but I want to be able to field a farm team. That's uh, you know, <laughs> uh, as an expansion team, we're starting out with essentially no prospects in the bank, and I want to I want to fill that bank of prospects. So I'm grabbing here, these are long shot prospects, but they're better than than nothing. They have a chance of potentially making the NHL because they're low top nine forwards. Now I mentioned something, you know, the unreliability of a low elite, low top nine is even lower, lower down. But for a seventh round pick, that's not actually bad. You know, a seventh round pick, if you get anything at all that, that has any kind of potential at all, is like a steal. So um, these uh, three guys that I'm drafting, Weeberg and uh, the two, the two Finns, um, they're going to be completing my draft. So that pretty much sets uh, things in stone, and I feel I, I, I got a whole lot of prospects, a whole lot of them with a good amount of value. Two elite prospects, Raymond and Studzel. Nybeck, Chistov, Kolosov, Kavanov, Mysak, Suni, Kulimin, are, and Karpatsev are all top six uh, forwards to caliber. Uh, Korostin is low elite. One of them is actually low elite, uh, but the others are all top six. Jarvin T. Niemela and Wieberg are, are low top nine. Niemela is actually uh, top six for defense. Uh, that's still a great haul. That is worth several first round picks in terms of haul so i think overall despite the fact that i gave away a whole lot of players um i still have a very very rich bank of prospects all of a sudden out of nowhere on to the contract renewals for the next season or several seasons that is rather straightforward by and large i just uh select what i, I want <laughs> and then uh, go with what they're asking for that year duration and uh, I remove 10% and that roughly uh, allows me to sign just about everybody without too much fuss I could nickel and dime them further but then I'd really have to intensely negotiate and that's a, that's a big hassle uh, so by and large I can get to sign most of the players 
and uh, that's how I know they'll be returning. Uh, sometimes, like Dustin Dukarski here, is not interested in playing with me anymore, so I'll just let him go uh, and replace him by some other farm goaltender. It's no, no biggie, no biggie. But um, yeah, signing the players, just not extra difficult. Uh, I, I suppose that uh, the most elitist of general managers would nickel and dime the players uh, as much as possible in order to, to stuff as many talented players as they can under the salary cap, but I've got a lot of room, to be honest. Uh, now, uh, free agency day, we're looking for a uh, new assistant coach in the farm because the previous one retired, and this Mark Bur Burroughs fella looks like he should be able to do the job. We're also going to need some scouts trying to see improve the talent level of our scouts because by and large their overall is almost all of them is C and that's rather bad. But Zdeno Shara here who has become a scout after a long career in the NHL looks very promising so I'm definitely giving him a contract. I'll probably use him in the queue or maybe perhaps in USA, USA West, um, try to get some improved American scouting, uh, but hopefully uh, he'll he'll sign with us. Um, and now, now that that's done, we can have a look at the free agents. Now, uh, there's a lot of room under the Quebec City Assassins cap space because we got rid of our big salaries during the the draft. We've got basically 30 million dollars of room, and uh, that could allow us to sign an elite goaltender like Robin Leonard. That's not bad. I can even be, I can even make a rather generous offer that uh, the other teams will have a very hard time competing with, because as you can see, Ottawa is also interested in signing Robin Leonard. And that's not really surprising because uh, they were they had the weaker of the two Andersons in front of their uh, net, and uh, that didn't go well for them, obviously. And they're uh, looking for an upgrade, also unsurprisingly. And I figure, you know, I could do better than Thatcher Demko. Uh, and of course, here it's difficult to resist the uh, allure and mystique of Alex Pietrangelo, he's really a high quality defenseman, and I don't have an elite right-handed defenseman, and if I signed him, I could have the pair of Zach Wierenski and Alex Pietrangelo, that would be a heavy hitting pair, a heavy hitting duo of defensemen as my first pair, so I'm, you know, I got a lot of money available to me. I just don't want him for seven years, you know, <laughs> that type of contract. So I lower the amount of years, but uh, increase the amount of money. And I hope the other teams can't really compete. I'm also looking to increase my chemistry on the blue line because in the past year, that's been one of the weakness of the team. Uh, so Schmaltz, I'm hoping, will fit nicely on the third pair or will give me an option on a third pair, because I think he's not quite ready for the third pair. I think he's a, a AHL level uh, defenseman, but I'm still I'm, I'm still hoping. I'm giving myself some options and we'll see you know, in the preseason, uh, because I saw another defenseman that might fit that bill, and I think this one is uh, the kind of guy that could replace uh, Ben Sherritt. His name is Derek Forbort, also an American and uh, the scout assessment says he's a good fit for my third pair. I was looking for good fits for my second pair because I don't really have a lot of chemistry on the second pair either, but those guys are not available at free agency, it seems. Nothing that would fit in terms of the chemistry, so I'm going to have to look on the, on the trade block for guys that might fit. Uh, as for the forwards, I need to get some leadership again because I did trade Stahl and Giordano. There's nothing like Joe Thornton, 40 year old Joe Thornton, for is that old experience, old man Joe. It's gonna be teaching some kids how to play hockey in Quebec City. Well, you know, if he accepts the offer. Uh, replacing Dustin Tokarski will be Dan Vladar. Um, 
Not Seen Here, I'll be offering uh, Oscar Dansk as well a, con a contract for that uh, same purpose. Now, Jonathan Bergen, I'm offering a contract because other teams are interested, Montreal and Chicago, and that tells me that it's a kid with potential. Uh, Mark Burroughs has joined the team where uh, we have a full coaching staff, and uh, new scouts of Brady Fairchild is uh, on board. As is Zdeno Shara. Welcome to the franchise. I'm uh, gonna have some slightly increased scouting. Uh, yeah, my, my scouts will be just a tad, tad bit better this season than last. It's not a major improvement. There's not enough uh, good scouts that I managed to add. But yeah, Bergen unfortunately signed with Montreal. I, my scouting was bad on it, but yeah. We're, welcome Derek Forbort. He's very happy to accept the offer, as is Joe Thornton. Very nice. Look at that beard. Jordan Schmaltz uh, will be joining the farm team most likely, but perhaps it is going to be an option uh, on the blue line in case of injuries. Dan Vladar will be filling that hole in front of the nets in the farm. Pietrangelo joins the team. That's an elite level signing, as is Robin Lanner. Very big, very big, and uh, hey, Quebec City might compete. Now, all summer long, I tried to get Alexis Lafreniere from Edmonton, no avail. And uh, what we didn't see, I signed Tyler Toffoli as well, right winger Tyler Toffoli. Uh, but now, we're in the, the just about, we're in September, and uh, the coach wants me to have Lucas Raymond in the pro squad. And I was thinking of starting Lucas Raymond in the farm, uh, because... I don't know that he's actually NHL ready for real, <laughs> but the coach is quite insistent uh, that he should get at least nine games, so I suppose I can do that, so especially since, you know, if I do anything else, it's just going to make my, my coach angry with me. He just won the Jack Adams trophy, so let's, let's, uh, let's treat him with kid gloves and give him what he wants and look at that plus two morale wow if life was this easy and uh, as i mentioned i'm looking for uh, a defenseman for a second pair and on the trading block my guy is cam fowler but what i notice is also the presence of john gibson on the trading block and now i just signed robin leonard it's bad form to trade a guy you just signed but John Gibson is on the trading block. And the difference between Leonard and Gibson is that Gibson is a little bit better <laughs> and he's a younger as well. Uh, so I'm thinking, all right, it's bad form to train the, uh, trade the Robin Leonard you just signed. But if, I mean, if, I, if it nets me Cam Fowler and John Gibson, I'm doing it. So we're giving away Demko, we're giving away, giving away Adam Larson, and of course uh, some uh, some other uh, more minor assets, and that trade is done. By and large, it's looking like uh, the new players uh, generally fit rather well with the coach's scheme fit, and that's really important. It might be more important than their actual talent level. As you can see, Nichuskin was such a perfect fit for the second line, it just boosted the team chemistry. And again, still trying to get Lafreniere in Quebec City, just because, you know, it's the it's the biggest talent of the Quebec Junior Major Junior Hockey League since uh, Sidney Crosby, or maybe Nathan McKinnon would be more, more accurate. And... You know, with Quebec City being Quebec City, you, you want that local kid to build a franchise around. That's the, the It makes a big story. It makes a good story, but I just can't get him. And the couch fit, the scheme fit, says that Alexis Raffinard actually fits on none of the coach's lines. So I'm just going to give up on that dream. I'm going to give up on the Raffinard dream because it's not meant to be. The chemistry is, is not there. It's been a very busy offseason. And uh, the next season is approaching, actually, it's in the next episode. Um, I'm still lacking a little bit of uh, chemistry on the defense, so there probably is still going to be more moves, but that's going to be left for the next episode. See you then, bye.
Sponsored by the Flues Crew on Patreon.